Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Sam Healy. Welcome back. Today we're taking a look at Lords of Hellas, which is a very large Kickstarter that was run last year, which we kind of didn't look at much either you or I, right? No, I just looked at it this morning. This thing brought in almost 1.8 million euros. Yeah, it was a lot. I mean, I was Huge pretty... Kickstarter. Yeah, and so these come by, and we always, when these Kickstarters come by, we're like, oh, that's cool. I wonder what it'll be like <laughs> when it comes out. You know, because right. there's so many games out at any given point. When this yeah. one came, though, and I opened it up, the size of the miniatures kind of blew me away. Those monster miniatures were huge, and these statue miniatures this game comes with are mega big. Yeah, totally huge. Although and we sat down and I said, why are these not fitting to get, they like have big <laughs> cracks. This is a weird way, to, and then I found that that's actually part of the game. Yeah, right, exactly. This game takes place in some sort of futuristic Greek mythos. It has like a, it's, it's like they could have made this exact same game with ancient Greece. Yeah. And it wouldn't change anything, but instead they like cyberpunked it up a bit. Techno, more more than cyberpunk. Techno, yeah, okay, technoed it up. It looks really cool. Yeah. And but does it play cool? Hmm. Let's find out. This is the map of the board, and in this game there are four ways to win. There are going to be giant monsters that are roaming around the board. And if you kill three of these giant monsters, you win the game. There are going to be statues here, monuments. Now these monuments start the game like this. And as time goes by, you'll be adding pieces to these monuments. Once a monument is completely finished, if you control that area for three turns, then you win the game. There are lands, there are different regions on the board. And each region, each group of regions is a land. You'll see this one here is green gray, blue, if you control two lands, then you win the game. And finally, there are temples that will be built all over the game board, and if you control five temples, you win the game. So there are multiple ways to win. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to choose their color, so maybe, let's say I'm yellow, and you're also going to be choosing your hero. We got Hercules, Helen, Achilles, and Perseus. So I pick one of these. It's going to give me a special ability, a starting bonus. I put it together with my board. I'm going to have stats. I have markers here to keep track of my stats for leadership, strength, and speed. These stats affect the game. Strength is going to be determined when you fight the monsters. Leadership allows you, shows how many guys you can move on the board. And speed is how far your hero can move. Once you pick one of the leaders, you're going to put your base on that leader and you're going to be able to move them around on the board and you also will have different armies. There are three pieces you have. You have your, your armies here, you have your hero, and then you have priests. Priests are special units that you'll be getting from temples and you'll be sending off to statues to do different things. Now on your turn, you have several actions that you can do. You have some basic actions that you can do that everybody can do on their turn. And so, for example, you can move some of your hoplites from one region to an adjacent region, and the number you can move is based on your leadership. You can move your hero on the board. Your hero can move equal to whatever your speed is. And you can send priests off, if you have any priests, this is a spot for you to get priests, you can send these priests off to a temple or to, I'm sorry, to one of these monuments. When you send a priest off to a monument, you're going to get a bonus based on how big that monument is. So for example, if the monument's completely finished, my hero's strength goes up by one, and I draw three combat cards. But if it was level one, I would just get one combat strength for my hero. So going to these different places is going to give you different benefits. So players are going to do this, and then you have one special action that you can do. And when you're done with a special action, you're going to put an X on it to show that you can't use it again until someone builds a monument. When someone builds a monument, everyone's X's come off. So what can you do with these special actions? Well, you can prepare, which lets you pick two things, heal an injury on your hero, draw a combat card, and recruit a hot white in the region where your hero is. You can do any two of those things, and you can do them twice if you want. Hunt lets you fight a monster. Usurp lets you use a glory token. We'll talk about that later on. Build a temple, you can just build a temple in a spot where a temple can be built, 
and there's different places on the board that show where these temples can be built. Uh, you can recruit if you have a city, and there are different spots where there are cities on the board, and you control that region. Then you can get uh, two guys. If you control Sparta, you'll get four guys. And you can march, moving all your guys from one region to another. This lets you move them twice. And finally, you can build a monument. Now, these are all different things that you are trying to do. To do these, most of the time, you're going to have to control a region. You'll see here, Achaia, for me to control it, I need two hoplites in it. When that happens, I control that region, and I will maintain control of that region till somebody else comes in and kicks me out. When I'm moving, I can also move a hoplite into the city that's in a region to give me extra defense. Building a temple in a region that I control is going to give me a priest. That priest will be sent to my uh, board where I will have a chance to then send them out onto the board. And controlling regions with statues will give you a special artifact that you can use, like this one here. Artifacts are usable. They basically, you'll tap them, exhaust them until uh, the, a monument is built. So this one lets me draw two combat cards and keep one. So you're moving around trying to get different things. Occasionally you might move into a region where somebody else is. When this happens, you're going to have a fight and you're going to be using combat cards to determine who's going to win that fight. The, the fight basically starts uh, by comparing your strengths. So let's say blue is attacking. Here's just straight two on two. The defender can play combat cards looking at the blue part, adding this and maybe some special benefits that they have. The attacker can play cards, and there's lots of combat cards in this game. Sometimes when you play a combat card, you're going to lose one of your hoplites at the end of the battle. That's just going to happen. It's a more powerful card. But eventually someone's going to stop. The winner kicks out the loser. One of the loser's hoplites die. The rest get to retreat. And then whether you win or lost, if you played any of these cards, you're going to lose hoplites for them. So that's how combat works in this game. Combat against monsters is something completely different. When you fight a monster, uh, the monster card is put here on the board. So here's the Chimera. This monster takes four wounds to kill. Only your hero can attack a monster. So if you go in a region, you hunt the monster. You're going to fight the monster. You're going to draw combat cards equal to your strength. And now you're using the top of the combat cards, looking at the symbols on them, the red one, to fight the monster. If you have them, you're going to put them on these. You're going to put uh, wound tokens to show that you've wounded the monster. And if you manage to get wounds on every part of the, the monster, you've killed him. Otherwise, the monster is going to attack you. There's a special attack deck. The person next to you is going to draw two cards, pick one of these, and use that. So maybe he uses this monster. It's going to do three attack to you. You have to use combat cards with three to block that. Otherwise, you do whatever the card says, which might say take a wound. If a hero takes a wound, they're going to flip over one of their tokens. So let's say, for example, I have three leadership here. I will flip this over to show that I'm wounded. Now it's only one, no matter how high it is on the track. And I'm going to have to heal this before I have three leadership again. If you ever take four wounds, the hero's kicked out of battle. Now some of the spots when you put your wounds on them, and this gives you a free priest, they'll give you bonuses. But the person who kills the monster is going to get that monster's artifact and they also get a glory token. Now monsters are basically determined whether they're on the board from this event deck here. At the beginning of the game, a certain number of event cards can be turned over, and some are going to bring out monsters and show you where that monster is. As the game progresses and people build monuments, more event cards will come, which can make a monster stronger or bring out new monsters. You also will have quests that come on the board. When a quest comes on the board, we'll find the matching quest token and put it in the spot indicated here. A hero can later on come to one of these spots if they meet the requirements on the card. So this one here says you need two leadership. The hero can come here and slowly take turns to finish the quest and get the reward and a glory token. If they have higher stats, like this one here says have two leadership and sacrifice a priest, if I can do that, I can come and just do the quest right away. So the quests will be on the board, so heroes are going to go around doing quests. Heroes are going to go around fighting monsters. That's basically the main use of heroes. Now, clearing, building a monument is one of the ways to progress the game. When a, you build a monument, everyone's going to remove the X's on their action board, giving them all their actions free again. And also, you're going to add the next stage of that monument, making that monument better. You, the player who builds the monument, also gets a priest for every temple they control. So that's a way to get more priests. Any priests that happen to be in monuments are returned to their people. And then you're going to roll a monster die for each monster on the map. Those monsters are going to either move, 
attack, move or attack, or do nothing. And each monster, when it moves, so let's say the Hydra, it will tell you what it does when it attacks. Here it kills one Hoplite in the region it's in and all neighboring regions. So that can be kind of crazy. So this is essentially a good chunk of what's in the game. There's a few other things. Sometimes when temples are build, built, you will, you will shuffle. There's a deck here of cards for each god in the game. You'll, these will be shuffled and you'll draw some cards equal to the number of players plus one. Each player will take one of these. It will give you a special bonus that only you have. So these are really cool and you'll be getting these when certain temples are built on the board. There's artifacts that are specific to the uh, different monsters and when you get these again there are special abilities you can use once until a monument has been built again and there's also generic artifacts you can get there are glory tokens that if you kill a monster or complete a quest in a region you can use these glory tokens as a usurp action to just basically take over a region and kick everybody else out because the people in that region really like you because of the glory you've done and this will continue until one player has reached one of the victory conditions in which case that player is the winner of the game Okay, so the miniatures of this game, I'll defer to you on the actual quality. I think they're pretty cool. I really like them. No, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're, they're, the only thing you already kind of mentioned, I was going to save it for this part of the video, but uh, this part was the only part that was really kind of a, of a head scratcher for me because I was like, okay, all of these other miniatures in this game are great, but this looks horrible. Why are these so modular and so... Right, like I not thought, couldn't, fitting together well. Couldn't they put them, <laughs> make a bigger model? Was like this is this seems like an, an anomaly here. But uh, now we understand why they're like that. Is because you actually build these during the game. So that's that was very cool, very cool. But the the quality of the miniatures is pretty good, pretty good. I mean, this is for a board game. This is exactly what you would want to see, especially from a Kickstarter that that made this much money and. It's a, these are great miniatures, not GW. That seems to be the the uh, standard, but definitely high value quality miniatures. My only complaint about the game would be the the temples looking like this. However, they do come with this little terrain expansion, which mm -hmm. I would definitely get. In this terrain expansion, they have the both the cities, which look good. They pop on the board, and then they have the temples. Yeah, And I should mention that uh, real quickly here that I also did not go over every detail of the game. The, there's one temple that you build that gives a special ability. Um, there's, uh, like I mentioned briefly, Sparta is slightly different than the other cities. Mm. There's a lot going on in the game, but I don't think the game, once you start playing it, is not that complex. You have some basic actions and then one special action. Yeah, and those special actions and... Um, regular actions are all spelled out for you on on player aid. So as long as, after you already know what each of those different actions do, this is a really simple game. I should also mention that we are talking about the base game here. I know that they have more gods, more monsters, more of everything. We haven't seen any of that. The only thing right. we've seen is the terrain expansion. Mm -hmm. And so we're talking about it from that perspective. The fact that there is more has me excited to see what that does. <laughs> right. But I don't feel like it's necessary, especially in this concept. We're just taking a look at this game itself, mm -hmm. and I really like it. Yeah. Um, this is the quintessential dudes on a map. Not as many of these games are made as you might think a year, where there's That's armies true. going around and fighting each other. Good and ones. I, yeah, but I mean, like, bad ones. Like, the, the, the worst ones you see are, like, Risk ripoffs, right? This yeah. one is more closer to what I would say Kemet is like. Because you have, I like how you have a hero who runs around. He's not really hampered by the enemy's forces. He's just sneaking through and doing things and fighting monsters and doing quests. Um, but your armies, that is actually a part of the game. Mm -hmm. It does not have dice. What do you think about that, that card combat? Well, it does have one die. Well, for the monsters, I mean, but for combat. <laughs> for combat, no. Yeah, it doesn't have any dice at all. It's, it's uh, card-driven uh, combat where um, I guess you would call that deterministic combat, yes, where you can, I guess there is some randomness to it because it, you're, you're talking about card, you know, flipping cards off the top of that monster deck. Yeah, yeah, definitely when you fight the monster, there's definitely some randomness involved. There. Yeah, but I mean, there's less randomness i guess you could say if you're battling somebody else you're probably asking me did i enjoy diceless combat 
And in this game, yes, I did. I'm actually really coming around in Diceless Combat because Kemet, Cosmic Encounter, these, uh, these <laughs> games have it. Yeah. And this one works pretty well. This does have a chunk of randomness in it. Now, not huge randomness, like where the monsters and the, and the quest show up is random. And, but the combat with monsters has a good chunk of randomness in it. You can yeah. prepare, get your strength up, go in. Uh, but sometimes you just get lucky with the monster and sometimes unlucky. Yeah, so that's sometimes there. Sometimes you get hosed. Yeah. And so you have to realize that's in the game. But there are some things I love about this game. The miniatures is obviously one. Fighting the monsters is another. The four different victory conditions, very different. Killing monsters, you could like never fight someone else and fight monsters, although you might struggle then because they might whoop up and win the game. Correct. But the blessings, this is a huge thing for me. It's, mm -hmm. You take the three decks of the, of the gods here, and if more gods show up, you'll take different decks, and each person drafting those, giving you special abilities and making you different than everybody else, I'm always on board with that. Yeah. Yeah, variable player powers, especially in that kind of drafting format. Um, you know, shades of Blood Rage kind of come up because that's similar to what you do in Blood Rage, although it's the core mechanism in Blood Rage. And here, it's just kind of a fringe benefit that you get uh, but you'll for doing probably certain things. Get, there's four, depends on, the, there's different temple cards when they come up, but there's four that come up. And right. because temples are one of the victory conditions of the game and they give you priests and they're, they're so useful, right. they're going to get built. Yes. So there will be four drafts, so by the end of the game, you will have four different powers than everybody else. And these powers are all really good. You look at them, you're like, I want all these. <laughs> True. Yeah, the first time we were drafting, I was like, wow, these are all really good. I don't want to let anybody else get any of these, especially the guy sitting right next to me. Those red cards in combat, those are really good. And when you're sitting next to a very militaristic per person like Vernon, um, you don't want to give him any of those red cards. But you may not want those red cards, those red blessings for yourself. You want, you might have a different thing that you're going for. So yeah, that the drafting was very cool. The blessings were also really cool as well, yeah. So for me, overall, I really like this game. There are some minor problems I have. I thought the rule book had some odd issues where they talked about coloring of different things. I don't like the fact that the coloring of the gods is the same as the coloring of the players. That seems kind of that's not that's not helpful when you're learning to play the game. And also the coloring of the lands. They just they use red, yellow, and green a lot in this game mm. uh, for various things. But the miniatures are great. <laughs> The gameplay itself, it's a good length of the game, 90 to two hours. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the four 90 victory. minutes to two hours, yeah. yeah 90, I don't think anyone thinks it's 90 hours. 90 to two hours. Um, I like the, the miniatures, I like the feel of the game, and this is that kind of game that could possibly be one of my favorite games, hmm. because Kemet is one of my favorite. And I don't know that I'm saying this is better than Kemet, but it definitely shoots up really high on my all-time games list. It really does. Hmm. I. I'm keeping this in my collection. Uh, so I'll have to get Sam a different copy uh, <laughs> if you want it. But for me, this is two Hoplite Spears up, way up. Uh, just one of my favorite games I've played in a long time. Well, I'm, I, I, am, I am not as enamored with Kemet as he is. So I, I, will say, I will say that I do enjoy this more than Kemet. And, oh! and that's not saying... Uh, that's not saying a whole lot, but it is saying a lot because I did enjoy Kemet. I thought it was a great game. I love all of the uh, different ways that you can make yourself different in Kemet than the other people. And I think it's easier to do that in this game. And that's one of the reasons why I think it's, it's better. Kemet felt more to me like a Euro game dudes on a board kind of kind of thing. There's a lot of combat in it and all that kind of stuff, but there were some Euro me mechanisms in, in between it. This one feels more like a, a Marathrashy kind of game with some of those other elements this sprinkled does not, on This top. does not feel like a Euro game no, much at all. No, not at all, not at all. But it does have a lot of hybrid mechanics in it. Card drafting for the blessings, variable player powers, you know, that type of stuff. Um, but uh, the, the, uh, on top of that, the miniature quality of this game far exceeds that of Kemet. 
Um, even even <laughs> okay. the monsters. Well, I didn't mean to make this so, into a no. A it's, no, this, I'm yeah. not. I'm not. I'm just using that as a as a launching point. I do enjoy the game a lot. I think it's a, a great. I mean, the fact that the Kickstarter did so well is one of the things that should let you know how good of a game it is. Um, not that I agree that every Kickstarter that makes a lot of money should is automatically a good game. But Lots of replayability. Yes, there's just so much that's that's good here. The techno slant on the ancient Greek, ancient uh, uh, history thing was really cool. In my I thought opinion. I would hate that, but it actually works yeah. really well. No, it it really looks it really looks great, and I, and I love that that almost has a a 40k feel to it a little bit not not as much but uh i really did enjoy it i thought it was a great game uh i'm gonna give it uh two uh lightning whiplashes up oh man that's cool as weapon also in the game yes so um i really enjoyed it had a great time playing it looking forward to uh have it hit the table hopefully many times in the future all right until next time i'm tom vassal and i'm sam healy we'll see you guys on the flip side Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.